Pakistani's iron grip, wielded in opulent exile, begins to slip. Nitimes.com. Subscribe. Digital slash home delivery. Log in. Register now. Help. Home page. Today's paper. Video. Most popular. Edition. U.S. Slash global. Search all nitimes.com. Asia Pacific. World Africa America Asia Pacific Europe Middle East. U.S. NY. Slash region. Business. Technology. Science. Health. Sports. Opinion. Arts. Style. Travel. Jobs. Real estate. Autos. Pakistani's iron grip, wielded in opulent exile, begins to slip. Diego Ibera Sanchez for the New York Times. The billboard depicting Altaf Hussein at the headquarters of his political party in Karachi. By DECLA and Walsh. Published, September 12, 2013. London. For two decades, Altaf Hussein has run his brutal Pakistani political empire by remote control, shrouded in luxurious exile in London and long beyond the reach of the law. Connect with us on Twitter. Follow at NetIMS World for international breaking news and headlines. Twitter list, reporters and editors. Enlarge this image. Diego Ibera Sanchez for the New York Times. An image of Altaf Hussein at the headquarters of his political party in Karachi, Pakistan. He follows events through satellite televisions in his walled-off home, manages millions of dollars in assets and issues decrees in ranting teleconferences that last for hours, all to command a network of influence and intimidation that stretches from North America to South Africa. This global system serves a very localized goal, perpetuating Mr. Hussein's reign as the political king of Karachi, the brooding port city of 20 million people at the heart of Pakistan's economy. Distance does not matter reads the inscription on a monument near Mr. Hussein's deserted former house in Karachi, where his name evokes both fear and favor. Now, though, his painstakingly constructed web is fraying. The British murder investigation has been closing in on Mr. Hussein, 59, and his party, the Mutahida Qami movement. His London home and offices have been raided, and the police have opened new investigations into accusations of money laundering and inciting violence in Pakistan. The scrutiny has visibly rattled Mr. Hussein, who recently warned supporters that his rest may be imminent. And in Karachi, it has raised a previously unthinkable question, is the end near for the untouchable political machine that has been the city's linchpin for three decades? This is a major crisis, said Ayatollah Hussain, the author of Fatal Fault Lines, a book about Pakistan's relationship with the United States. The party has been weakened and Altaf Hussein is being criticized like never before. Mr. Hussein's right offers a striking illustration of the political melee in Pakistan. His support stems from the Mohajirs, Urdu-speaking Muslims whose families moved to Pakistan after the partition from India in 1947, and who make up about half of Karachi's population. Since the 1980s, the Mutahida Qami movement has fiercely defended Mohajir interests and in turn it has been carried to victory in almost every election and to an enduring place in national coalition governments as well. Mr. Hussein fled to London in 1992, when the movement was engaged in a vicious street battle with the central government for supremacy in Karachi. The British government granted him political asylum and, ten years later, the British passport. London has long been the antechamber of Pakistani politics, where self-exiled leaders take refuge until they can return. The former military ruler Pervez Musharraf lived here until recently, and the current Prime Minister, not Wazirif, lived here until 2007. Mr. Hussein, however, shows no sign of going back. The Mutahida Qami movement has an office in Edware, in northwest London. But these days Mr. Hussein is mostly at home, in a red brick suburban house protected by raised walls, security cameras and contingent of former British soldiers he is hired as bodyguards from there, he holds court, addressing his faraway followers in a vigorous, sometimes maniacal style, punctuated by jabbing gestures and hectoring outbursts. Occasionally he bursts into song, or tears. Yet, on the other end of the line, it is not unusual to find tens of thousands of people crowded into a Karachi street, listening raptly before an empty stage containing Mr. Hussein's portrait, as his disembodied voice booms from speakers. The cult of personality surrounding Altaf Hussein is quite extraordinary, said Farzana Sheikh, 